Welcome to episode three of a four-part series on how Autodesk simulation solutions are being used for industrial electrical equipment. In this episode, we're going to be looking at Autodesk Simulation CFD360 for thermal components and airflow. My name is James Herzen. So in episode two, we looked at how we can use Autodesk Simulation Mechanical 360 for running a random vibration analysis. The reason that you would do this versus your typical prototype testing would be that you can easily run multiple scenarios to test different types of materials to choose which is best for damping. You can also run scenarios to determine the thickness that is needed for parts such as mounting plates to reduce vibrations in, in your parts. This helps you to avoid expensive testing and prototyping. So again, we used Mechanical 360 in the last episode. That's where you would be doing things like your random vibrations and your response spectrums and other things such as dynamic and static testing for stresses. What we're going to be doing today is looking at simulation CFD 360, where we're going to be able to couple our thermal and CFD analysis to see how our electronic enclosure heats and cools thanks to the air. So what are concerns that people have with hot components? Well, the first one may be that you're going to be paying twice for using these components. You actually pay to use it, and power them, and then you pay again to cool them. Heat also reduces the durability of components. Some studies have shown that durability is halved for every 10 degrees centigrade. Workplace hazards exist when parts are too hot. If they're too hot or they're cooled improperly, such as the air is directed at the, in the wrong location, people can become injured and cause downtime and money. Failures in epoxies and other materials also exist because of overheating. So why do parts overheat? Well, first, the material selected might not be conductive enough, or it could be too conductive, causing problems with the system. Parts are designed without heat dissipation in mind. Maybe something isn't expected to get as hot as it does, but when it's actually in production, it overheats. There's often times that things are designed for, such as with fans, but something is blocking the airflow, either in the fan, in a vent, or somewhere else in the system. Also, components used to improve airflow may not be sufficient. You might have used a fan, but it might not be bringing in enough air. So why would we use simulation over traditional testing? Well, this is pretty simple. Traditional testing takes a lot of time, there are a lot of factors to take into account, and it can be very expensive. With simulation CFD360, you can easily use different materials that you select to help dissipate the heat. You can run any number of combinations of materials and airflow in parallel while leaving your computer open and giving you the solution you need. You can determine the necessary air intake. How much air can that fan bring in versus pushing out of the vent? Multiple design scenarios, again, saving you time and labor, also avoiding all catastrophic failures. So with this in mind, let's jump into the software and see how we would go through setting up a combined thermal and CFD analysis. So we're starting out here in Fusion, and you can see that where there were holes, such as where the fan and the vent were, we've actually patched those off so that we have a closed off enclosure. This is going to allow CFD to automatically create air in that closed off space. We've also thickened the walls so that we can define them as aluminum inside of CFD as well. So let's go up to the toolbar and choose CFD360. We'll press that and send that straight over to the software, and we're just going to do a little bit of cleanup with small object removal and edge merging. The reason we're going to do this is sometimes it helps us get a more successful mesh on our part. So with that done, the model is going to finish loading into the software, and the first thing that we're going to do is try and define some materials for our different parts. We're going to actually have three types of materials in this analysis. We're going to have the wires, which we're going to make out of copper. The rest of the metal we're going to say is aluminum. And then the fluid that was automatically generated in the gaps we're calling air. So we're going to start by middle mouse clicking and hiding some of these parts so that we have a better, better view of the different wires. So you can see them there, cylinders. And by simply clicking on them, we can choose those for the parts that we're going to define as copper. You can see down at the bottom, we have a few more wires to select, and then a few more on the outside of the enclosure as well. We can select all of these at the same time and define them all to have the same material properties. 
Also keep in mind, by default, when we click Edit, it's saying that these are fluid. We need to change that to solid and then go ahead and choose copper for the material. We click Apply. And the next thing we can do is choose the rest of the solid parts to be uh, aluminum. So we'll choose all of the materials except the ones that were automatically created, which are named volumes. And we're going to edit those and make those aluminum. So again, click the Edit button, change that from fluid to solid, and choose aluminum. Click Apply. And now lastly, the rest of them that are undefined we know are our air components flowing through uh, the electronic enclosure. This time we can leave it fluid and air and click Apply. So we can now show all of our parts and start to define our boundary conditions in the model. So we're going to have, well, multiple boundary conditions, but two with respect to the airflow and one with respect to the temperature. So we're going to start by choosing a surface. And down here where the fan is located, we're going to tell the program how much air this fan is bringing into the electronic enclosure. So with that surface selected, we can click Edit. And instead of choosing a velocity or how fast the air is going to be moving in, we can choose a flow rate. And you can use whatever unit system you want to define how much air is going to be brought in. We're going to type in 200 here, meter, cubic meters per hour, and click OK. And then up at the top where there's a vent, we're going to choose surfaces. So you see that we're actually choosing the little surfaces everywhere in between the vents. So those little surfaces represent the air. And so we're going to apply another boundary condition of pressure there. We're saying pressure is zero at that surface. So this is basically going to tell the program that, OK, we're bringing air in at a certain amount down at the fan, and it's going to come out the vent at the top. And so we're going to be able to see the air flow and pass the components along the way. So with this done, we're going to go ahead and hide the air and some of the other components. And we're going to select different parts that are going to be heat generating. So again, we're going to have to use a volume select. And we're going to select uh, many of these parts in here that are going to be producing power and uh, or, or at least being active and using electricity and causing heat to be generated. So as you can see, again, we can select all of these parts at the same time and click Edit. And again, we'll be applying a boundary condition. This time, instead of applying a, a CFD airflow boundary condition, we're going to be a, applying a thermal boundary condition. So you see we're doing a heat generation, where again, all of your unit systems are available. And let's just type in 10. You can put in whatever number you want here, and then click Apply. So we now have our materials defined and our boundary conditions. So that being said, we can easily just click the Solve button and start analyzing. Right now, we're going to actually change our iterations to 250 and go and make sure that we have heat transfer active as well. With this done, it's going to couple the heat transfer and CFD analysis. So we're able to then click the Solve button, and it's going to send this information to the cloud and bring up showing it in the Job Manager. So you can see that our job is now running and being uploaded to the cloud, where it will then analyze and email you when your results are ready. So here are our results. You can see that it's, it's ranging from pretty comfortable to just a little bit warm. 107 really isn't that bad. So I don't think any of the hot air coming out of here is really going to hurt anybody. It just might be a little bit warm. But you can see where the hotter components are, and that down where the fan is, the components are cool, which you'd expect, and the ones higher up are a little bit warmer. It makes perfect sense. All right, so now that we see how we can heat up and cool down our parts, you need to go ahead and go to this link, grab this model, and start practicing. There's three simple steps once you have the model on your computer. Simplify the CAD geometry. This doesn't just go for this part. This is the same for the parts you're going to be working on. Next, define your mesh conditions. A good mesh is going to give you good results. Make sure you have enough elements in the areas where air is flowing so that you can see a realistic flow of the air. Input your loads and review the results. Again, if you're putting in inaccurate loads, you can't expect your results to be right. 
If you have any questions or trouble with anything you saw here or downloading the software or uh, parts, please feel free to email me at simsquad at autodesk.com. You can also call me directly at 855-237-5746. For additional tips on CFD, mechanical, or mold flow, or to see some of the hottest technologies coming out from the simulation team here at Autodesk, please go to simulation-tv where you're going to find all sorts of information, tips, and tricks that can help you out. Thanks a lot, and I hope to see you next time for the last episode in this series.